Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. amen. Certainly it's just one more blessing from the great God of heaven that he has given us this opportunity for us to come out this afternoon to worship and praise his holy and his divine name. I don't know about you, but I'm excited at every opportunity that I have to come and fellowship with my brothers and sisters in Christ to lift up and praise God's holy and his divine name. I am always amazed. Um, you know, you never know who's watching us. Um, the thing about um, now being in the age of online worship is that you have people all across this country that are watching us, that are tuning in. Um, I've been doing a um, studying with a, well, not studying, but uh, some preparation as I'm getting ready to do a wedding of one of my frat brothers um, later on this year. Um, but his fiance is an atheist. She calls herself an atheist. I know you're watching, Jason. Good to see you. Uh, I'm talking about you. She's an atheist. Um, and so um, they text me after we got out of um, worship service this morning um, and said that they had been listening. And you told me that she wants to have a Bible study. So she wants to she wants to learn more about God. She wants to learn more about the church. So I asked that y'all would pray. Pray for us. Pray for us and uh, pray for us in that endeavor um, that God's word will have free course um, in her life. Um, Because I would have you to know that the gospel is God's power to save mankind and is still in the soul saving business on today. So good to see everyone that has come back out on this afternoon. If you have your copy of the word of God, be going to Colossians chapter three and verse number 16. Um, For anyone that's been in the Church of Christ two days, you know this scripture. Um, It's uh, it's a very familiar um, passage of scripture. Um, And we started on last week um, dealing with um, some lessons um, on encouragement us how to get the most out of our worship experience and we talked about that on last week how to get the most out of worship and I said over these next few weeks we want to look at the various aspects of worship um, because if we're not careful as I said worship can become routine if you're not careful worship can become mundane it can become just something you know it's on your schedule but you won't really put your all into it and if you don't put your all into it you're not going to be able to get anything out of it um so on tonight um we're going to look at the singing part um of our worship so on tonight colossians chapter 3 and verse number 16 the bible says let the word of christ dwell in you richly with all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Now, we're going to be looking tonight, as I said, at singing. And I want you to understand that singing is an important part of our worship to God. And if y'all really think about it, we spend about a third of our time here on Sunday morning singing songs. That's what we do in our worship service. We spend that singing. So I like what the psalmist David said in Psalms chapter 100, verses 1 and 2. He said, I will make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. Then he said, serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with what? Singing. So, so, so while there may be a few that maybe not like to sing, most Christians love to sing praises unto God and we certainly know that singing brings about a great joy because David once again says in Psalms chapter 63 verses 3 through 5 he says because of your loving kindness is better than life my lips shall praise you thus I will bless you while I live I will lift up my hands in your name my soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips now this could mean a either speaking or singing praises unto God and there's something different about singing words of praise that is very uplifting especially when you're going through something in your life and we are taught in the New Testament to express our joy through songs to God that's what James said in James chapter 5 and verse number 13 he said if anyone is among you suffering let him pray is anyone cheerful let him sing songs now singing is a great way to express our joy to God for what he has done in our life and singing can even stir up your heart it can bring to your remembrance things that have happened in your life now sometimes you'll find Christians that have really lost their love for singing to God and and when they sing they don't sing they mouth words or, or, or they just don't sing at all, you know, you know, and, and, and I'm sure we, we have all seen Christians like this, and while there may be some, I think it don't really hit the sisters like that, I think it's really for us men, I think we, we really have that issue about not really open up our mouth and singing unto God, so our singing should not be without church, get this, emotion. 
You got to put some emotion into your singing. And just like everything else, when you're offering it up to God, it ought to be the best that you can give to God. Now, some of those who do not sing well will say, you know what? I can't carry a tune. There will be most of us, you know, you know, on a good day we can't carry a tune. Amen, amen. Somebody say amen. But I can promise y'all that you being able to carry a tune does not matter to God. Because God is more interested in your heart being engaged than he is interested in what your voice sings like. So you may not be able to sing like Aretha. You may not be able to sing like Mahalia. But as long as you can open up your mouth and give God your best, it comes up before him as a sweet smelling savior. So, 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 uh, and so I know of some entire congregation. I've been and preached at a lot of churches. And I've been in some churches and nobody had a tune. Tell the truth, shame the devil. Ain't nobody, ain't no, couldn't nobody carry a tune, but guess what? They sang, and they gave their best to God. And, and, and I, I love to see people, I love people, you'll meet older men that may have a third, fourth, fifth grade education, may not be the most educated people, but when they pray, when they're able to participate in the worship service of God, man, you would think they, was, they give their best, they do the best that they can. Now, one thing that's going to help you to get the most out of your singing is to remember why you sing. Yeah. 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 Remember the purpose. Yeah. Remember what the reason for you singing is all about. Now, one of the main reasons we sing, number one, is to praise God. Yes. That's why we're here. Yeah. So that we can praise God. We can see this in the very word where it says, singing to yourselves in psalms and hymns. The word hymn, which comes from the Greek word hymnos, which means a song of praise. That is what it means. It means a song of praise. So praising God should come naturally to Christians because we got a lot to praise God for. Now, again, we want to notice how David responded in song to God for the blessings that he gave him. Because when you, if you realize it or not, when you read the book of Psalms, you ain't reading them but a bunch of lyrics. You ain't reading them bunch of bunch of songs. This is how David responded back to God. So he says in Psalms chapter 28, verses 6 and 7, he said, Blessed be the Lord, because he has heard the voice of my supplications. He says, The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him, and I am helped. He said, Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices, and I will sing my praise to him. Yeah. Now, David to me is a great example of a man who had a great zeal for God and who loved God so much that he did that in his best in singing. And we know by reading about David's life, you know what he praised God for. You know what he thanked God for. He engaged in this in his entire being. Now, why he was guilty of many things, no one could ever accuse David of not praising God. As a matter of fact, God even said that David was a man after his own heart. Now, now we should have this same excitement that David had when he praised God. We need to understand that when we sing, we are singing praises to God Almighty. And we can just imagine that in our minds that where you're really at, you're not really at. What do you mean, preacher? That you are the performer and God is the audience. So when you come in here and when you're singing, you're not singing for nobody else to necessarily hear how you sound, but you are singing because you are offering worship and praise unto the almighty God. Now, even when things are not going good for you and you feel horrible, you can be uplifted and uplift others through singing praises to God. This is what Paul and Silas did. Y'all remember Paul and Silas in Acts chapter 16? And remember how the slave girl who was demon-possessed wouldn't leave Paul alone. And so he cast the demon out of her, which made her owner angry. So they had Paul and Silas beaten and thrown in jail. And these men would have been in severe pain. But what do you find them doing in prison? In Acts chapter 16 and verse number 25, the Bible said, but at midnight... Yeah. 
Something about midnight. It said, but at, but at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. Could you imagine if that was us, man? We'd have been saying anything that we wanted to say. Lord, why you put me in this predicament? Lord, I'm just trying to do your will. I'm just trying to do your work. I didn't sign up to go to prison, Lord. I didn't sign up to go to jail. Why is it that I'm having to experience this? They don't do any of that, but you find them singing and praying to the Almighty God. Now, these men knew how important prayer and singing was, so they sang praises unto God, even though I'm sure they felt miserable. I'm sure they felt hopeless at that time, but they still mustered up the strength to open up their mouth and to sing praises unto God. So not only did their singing uplift them, but get this, the Bible says that the other prisoners heard them. As they were singing, the other prisoners heard them. So what would they do? They were not only able to encourage themselves in a bad situation, but they were able to encourage somebody else while they were going through that situation. God was because he responded with an earthquake that shook just enough to free them out of their shackles. And he added a bonus. It led to the Philippian jailer and his whole household being saved. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse number 15 says, Therefore, by him, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praises to God, that is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks unto his name. Now, this verse includes singing praises to God, and it teaches us that our singing is considered a spiritual sacrifice that we offer up to God, that we offer up to God as we praise him and as we give him thanks. Now, let's see how Peter describes it. Write this down in 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse number 5. This is how Peter describes it. He says, you also, as living stones, are built upon a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Now, we are described as being a holy priesthood. And those spiritual sacrifices that we make, as Peter said, these spiritual sacrifices, which include singing, must be acceptable unto God. Which means that we must give our best in our singing. Now, we cannot be like those of Malachi's day. If we read, go back to Malachi chapter number 1, verses 7 and 8, he said, You offered defiled food on my altar, but say, in what way have we defiled you? By saying the table of the Lord is contemptible. And when you offer the blind as a sacrifice, is it not evil? And when you offer the lame and sick, is it not evil? Offer it then to your governor. Would he be pleased with you? Would he accept you favorably, says the Lord of hosts? God was not pleased with them trying to substitute their sacrifices, which were cheap imitations, and God would not be pleased with us if we tried to offer spiritual sacrifices, get this, that are not from your heart. We can get the most out of singing when we realize that our singing is not for us. But that our singing is for God and that we got to give him our best. And another purpose for singing, as it said in the scripture, teaching and admonishing one another. Colossians, again, Colossians chapter 3 verse 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. So when we sing together, we're teaching together. I say when we sing together, we're teaching together. Many of the songs that we sing, if you really pay attention to the word, it got a wonderful message that we should pay attention to and they are capable of lifting us up and even convicting us of our own wrongdoing. So as we sing, we need to keep in our mind the words that we are singing. Don't just be singing, but be understanding the words that you are singing so that you can get the most out of it. Now, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18 and 19, another famed scripture, it says, And do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation or excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Now, Paul tells us to be filled with the Spirit. Paul, how are we going to be filled with the Spirit? By singing to one another and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Now, I think we can all agree that singing can stir up your emotions. 
That's why sometimes during the song service you see tears come to people's eyes. That is why you see some people, they express their emotions, they may lift their hands. Some people may holler aloud, but they are just expressing the joy of God that is on the inside, and they're expressing that through their voice in their singing unto him. Now, again, notice again, Colossians, he said, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. So we must allow the word of Christ to dwell in us richly, and we need to put our minds on Christ as we sing. Our minds ought not be on the neck bones that we left on the stove. <laughs> Our minds ought not be on, man, I got to be there at 9 o'clock on Monday morning. Our minds ought not be on that. This is God's time. This is God's house. And when we come into his house, our minds ought to at all times be focused upon him. Amen. So when you have the right attitude about singing, it can be a wonderful blessing for you. And another important thing that we got to work on when we sing is to engage our mind on what we are singing. Right. We cannot have our mind neutral and mouth the words and expect to get anything out of it. We do this all the time with songs that we hear on the radio because we are more interested in the tune than the words. And we might hum a few bars of the hook in the song, but we don't actually have a clue many times what the song is actually teaching. We just like how it grooves with us. But this may not apply to, to all of us because I know that some of us may pay attention to what the songs are saying, but there are also many like me who have no idea what the song is teaching. This can happen to us when we are singing to God and each other, especially when it is a song that we have memorized. Oh, I know that. Oh, already, they're in the name I love to hear. I love to sing his word. Sound like music. I'm, I'm just singing it. I'm, I'm just putting out the words, but there's no feeling in it. There's no emotion that is being put into it, and I'm not really setting my mind on what the song is teaching me. Out of all that getting, get an understanding. So, 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse number 15, he says, he, oh preacher, you must knew what I was finna say. He says, I will sing with the spirit and I will also sing with an understanding. So I can promise you that when you make an effort to understand what you are singing, it'll help you pay attention. Yes, when you try to understand what the words are saying and you'll be able to get the most out of singing during the worship experience. Now, not only are we able to engage our mind as we sing, but we must also engage our heart yeah. in our singing. As we make melody in our heart, I'm not talking about this right here, but as we make melody in our hearts to the Lord and as we sing with grace in our hearts, we got to pluck the strings of our heart. We got to pluck the strings of our heart, church. When you think about the purpose of our singing and you envision yourself standing before God himself singing to him, Amen. how could you not have your emotions stirred up? Amen. How could you not have some feeling in that when you know I am singing before the almighty God of heaven? Amen. Now, Proverbs says, the proverbial writer says in Proverbs chapter 15 and 13, he says, a merry heart makes a cheerful countenance. You feel better. Any of y'all, I don't know about y'all, but you know, I can be at the house, I can be at work, or just driving down the road. And you know, sometimes you can be in a mood, you know, whatever your mood may be. And sometimes just singing a song really picks up your spirit. Man, you can be riding down the road and, man, you just got all kinds of things on your mind. Man, you end up turning to the right station. Oh, man, that's my jam right there, man. You begin, you get to singing, man. You be at the red light, man. I mean, you just bopping, man. And the folk next to you looking at oh, man, they getting down, man. They just don't know that song is really speaking to your heart because it is speaking to something, whether it's something that you went through or whether it's something that you're dealing with, it speaks to your heart. So therefore, you are able to get the most out of the words that are being said. So another thing that will help us to get the most out of our singing is to sing praises outside of worship service. Yeah. 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 I ain't say you can't listen to Boosie. No. <laughs> I ain't say you couldn't listen to Future, Lil Yachty, or you know, Lil Baby, or Dub Baby. I, I, I didn't say that. 
But outside of the house of God, you ought to be singing some praises. Outside of the house of God, you ought to be making melody in your heart unto the Lord. We ought to be, he said in Acts chapter 16 and 25, he said, but at midnight, Paul and Silas were singing and they were praying and they were singing unto God. And the Bible says, listen, the prisoners were listening to them. I want to ask you a question. What kind of songs do you sing in your midnight? What kind of songs do you sing when you are experiencing trouble? What kind of songs do you sing when you find yourself between a rock and a hard place? What song are you singing? So don't limit your singing to hymns. Try singing a prayer to God sometimes. You can also get worship songs. We know we, we, we listen to all kinds of stuff. We know we can set aside some time to feed ourselves something spiritual. Something that's going to build up our spirit man. So you should take advantage of singing to God every opportunity that you can. And you know, that don't mean you just sing it out loud. You can be singing in your head. You know, you know, you may, you know, I, you know mo most of the time, my grandmama, when she was cooking, and, and sometimes she'd be singing, most of the time I didn't know what she was saying. She just, hmm, 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 you know. Humming along, you know, going on about her business, but she was singing within herself. She was making melody in her heart unto the Lord. And, you know, that's something that you have to purposely do. That's something that you have to purposely focus on. And, again, we keep coming back to the same point, that whatever you're going to do, you got to be intentional about it. you got to put forth effort into it. It's not just going to happen. you got to make it happen. One tip that, that I mentioned is that on last week when I talked about one thing that was going to help some of us pay more attention in church was sitting closer to the front. And then I talked about how when you're sitting up here, you're able to hear all of the voices that are behind you. And as you're listening to the singing, it is encouraging you. Man, it's nothing like hearing your brothers and sisters lifting up their voices unto God. Ain't nobody in no competition. Ain't nobody trying to put on no show. But we're just joining our songs in together, making melody in our hearts to the Lord. Singing is not just something that's on the schedule. It's not just something that's on the program. It is an intricate part of our worship to God. So if we're going to sing, we ought to want to give our best. Yes. If we're going to sing, we ought to want to put our all into it. And that includes some emotion. You know, one thing, one thing, uh, you know, and, 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 and if we're not careful, we can get in this. And a lot of churches, you know, they already have a schedule. You know, you, you sing your three standards and you sit down. You sing your two verses and you sit down. But, you know, sometimes you can be singing songs. And you can just see how the song is just blessing people yeah. while they're singing. So what you don't want to do is quench the spirit. That's, it. That's what you don't want to do. That's what, and a lot of people, you can see, you don't know who that song is blessing. You don't know how that is encouraging that person. Sometimes, I, you, hey man, you might have to just restart over and go over back over the verse. Go back over the lid. Hit it over again. We got all the time in the world for people to be blessed. We got all the time in the world for people to be encouraged. So what we don't want to do is get in a hurry and miss God. What we don't want to do is get in a hurry. I, I, I was joking with a, a preacher friend of mine. He just um, at this uh, congregation that he's at now. They have they have they have this thing that church got to be over with in an hour. Not us, but um. Hey, Clyde, but, um, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, they got to be out of church in an hour. You know, and I was telling him, I said, man, I said, do you know y'all be in goddamn left and Jesus ain't never showed up? <laughs> We're too in a hurry. Well, and, and as I said on last week, if you can sit there and binge watch a show on Netflix, for eight, nine, ten hours. You mean to tell me we can't focus ourselves for two hours of worship on Sunday? Amen. <laughs> hey, hey we can go to the game, man. We can sit there, man. Half time, we up. I mean, we just enjoying everything that is going on. 
if we can put that same energy, we can put that same energy into worshiping God and make sure that we give our best when we sing to him and we lift up, lift up his holy and his divine name. So, so, so I don't want us to get the mindset that singing is just another something that we have to do. But realize, church, that it is a privilege and an honor for you to be able to open up your mouth and sing praises unto God. Let us not take the freedom that we have lightly. I was talking to one of my professors the other day and he goes over and he does mission work over in China. He's been doing mission work in China for the past, I think about 10 years, but it's never been widely broadcast because when he goes over, he's, he's organizing the thing with one individual and that one individual is going out and telling individuals because, you know, we can only have 15 to 20 people in the house at one time because you don't want the authorities to see too many people gathering in one place together because they're already going to assume you're doing something illegal. And in China right now, if you get caught as a Christian in worship, you're going to jail. You're going to jail. They're going to put, they're going to put you in jail. So you look at what other people are willing to risk their freedom. Other people are willing to risk their safety and their livelihood just to have the opportunity that we have to come into a space where ain't nobody hounding you, ain't nobody beating you upside your head, but you can come freely in a space and you can offer up worship to God. Everybody don't have that freedom. Everybody don't have that liberty. Everyone is not afforded that opportunity without, without wondering when I walk out the door, the police going to be waiting on me. Even over there right now, you got the government knocking down church buildings, putting preachers in jail. They are willing to go to the extent of putting their lives in danger just so they can have an opportunity to worship God. So let us never Take for granted the opportunity that we have to come together, to sing together, to make melody in our hearts under God and make sure that when we sing, even though I can carry a tune in a bucket, praise God. When I sing, I'm going to sing my bit. Man, if you don't like the way it sounds, you better bring some earmuff next Sunday. You may not like it. It may sound like nails on a chalkboard to you. But it's coming up before God as a sweet-smelling Savior. And again, church, I want you that while you're singing, as we're going through our singing services, in your mind, just think, I'm singing. God is my audience. I'm singing. I'm the performer. He is my audience. And just ask yourself, what kind of performance do you want to give God? What kind of performance do you want to give him? Amen. If, if you are here um, on tonight, um, maybe you're watching us um, and you are not a Christian. You find yourself outside of the ark of safety. You have not yet had the opportunity to have your sins washed away by the blood of the lamb. I would ask that you not put off today for what you plan on doing tomorrow. Take advantage of the opportunity that you have in the now. Because as we've seen, if you live long enough, you know that time is, is but a, life is but a vapor. It appears for a little while and soon vanishes away. We know not when the end of the road shall come. So while we still have a little road left, let us take advantage of it. Let us do what we need to do today. If you are in sin, get it right today. Don't, don't keep going on day after day in sin. Because if you die in your sin, where God is that you cannot go. So if you, if you are desired to become a Christian, you come by hearing his word. Believe in the same, repenting of your sins, confessing Christ as your Savior, being buried with him in baptism, have your sins washed away, done away with, never to come up before you in this life, not the life that is to come. And after that, you remain faithful unto death, and he'll give you a crown of life that will never fade away. Maybe you're here, maybe you're watching, you're already a Christian, but you say, hey, I'm standing in the need of prayer, the prayers of the righteous, they still avail as much. So if you're here, maybe you're watching, you're subject to the invitation, we beckon, we plead, why not take advantage of this opportunity now as together we stand and sing the song of invitation there's a fountain free tis for you and me let us hear